Campfire question. Oh, goodness. Campfire questions where we answer your questions about life, the universe, and RV camping. From ZZ. Wow, I just looked at your oldest video. You guys have been doing this for 11 years? That's a record long time. Wow. Do you find it hard to find boondocking spots now as opposed to 11 years ago? Is full-time RV getting more and more common? Do you have trouble with finding parking with your huge truck and Airstream? I'm thinking of getting a travel trailer, but I'm afraid I won't find room to park them in the free parking areas. Thinking I would find more parking with a Class B instead. Dad, what are your thoughts? So that's actually many campfire questions <laughs> from our friend ZZ. In addition to answering ZZ's questions, we'll think back because we have been doing a long, long honeymoon a, a long, long, long time. time. Uh, to answer ZZ's questions specifically, I don't think I've seen a huge difference in terms of boondocking availability. I, I would say not a huge difference in boondocking, like true boondocking, like out on Bureau of Land Management land, that sort of thing. Now, with regards to overnight parking at certain places, I would say it is more difficult now than it used to be in some cities. If you're kind of out in the middle of the country in smaller towns, it's not really a big deal, but when you get closer to like cities like Seattle or San Francisco or Portland or the Northeast, a lot of cities up there, it's harder to find free overnight parking. I think it was easier probably 10 or 11 years ago to find that sort of overnight parking. To your next question, are there more people full-time RVing I would say yes, there are. There's really more people doing everything because if you think back 11 years ago, the, <laughs> the RV of a market was like in the toilet and nobody was selling RVs. In fact, like Airstream was downsizing, they had laid a ton of people off work. The economy was in poor shape. Fuel was much more expensive yeah. then even than it is now. And so there were fewer people actually RV traveling. <laughs> now the industry is booming. There are more and more people looking to even full-time RV travel. A lot of baby boomers are retiring. They're getting RVs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have seen change from that standpoint. It's sort of become a little more mainstream just in more people are putting it out there on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, whatever. And so more people are being exposed to it. So I think it's enticing a lot more people to do it as well. Whereas before, you know, a lot of people, their only exposure to full-time RVing was Cousin Eddie in Christmas Vacation. You know, that, that was sort of what a lot of people would think of when they would think of somebody living in their RV or traveling in their RV. And so now they sort of see like, oh, okay, there are normal people that do, do this. Yeah, when we first started doing this YouTube channel, you even have to think about the technology at the time. It oh, was yeah. literally before the smartphone. Yeah, we didn't have iPhones or smartphones. The first year we did this, we didn't have a GPS. So it was literally like me with a map. Now the great benefit to having a GPS is that you'll never again experience that feeling of being lost. And I had a tape-based camcorder yep. and I used to record, you had to record everything to the tape, then somehow get it from the tape to your computer, yeah. edit it on the computer and upload it. And all of that has gotten so much easier over the years. Yeah, and YouTube used to limit the length of your videos. They used to could only be three minutes long. So it's funny, sometimes we'll get messages from people like, where are your old videos? So short. It's like, well, <laughs> because they had to be. Didn't have a choice. Yeah, you know? that was the the way it was. Some of our old videos were cringeworthy. <laughs> Most of those have been taken off YouTube. I don't think they were cringeworthy. Well, I cringe when I look at them. The dump station experience. They were a great band in the '60s. Do you look back at TV shows from 20 years ago and cringe? You know. Technologies may be better, special effects might be better, but we were still telling good stories, I think. I don't know, some of those old videos were pretty bad. Some of them are pretty good. So if you haven't watched our old stuff, I encourage you to do so. 
I mean, in what other country can you toss together this dichotomous human gumbo and have it all somehow work? A happy commingling of beer guzzlers and Bible thumpers, crotch rockets and Harley hogs. A place where black blends with red, white, and blue. Finally, uh, ZZ asks, do you have trouble finding parking with your huge truck in Airstream? Uh, the straight answer is yes, it is an issue, especially if you're navigating in an urban environment. You know, if you're towing a big RV rig, you just can't park anywhere anywhere. you please and then you can't even enter any parking lot you please so you know we've done videos on youtube about the whole process of for example finding a gas station that's suitable for your rv rig Mm -hmm. but you know we probably should do one just about parking specifically it really affects you more on travel days than than once you get to a destination because you know of course once you get to your destination you get to your campsite, you unhitch, and then you're just worried about your tow vehicle. It's those, you know, in-between destination days where it's challenging, where you're stopping for lunch and you need to be able to park your 55-foot long rig. Yeah, we almost always figure out a way to park. If we're trying to find, for example, a certain restaurant in a little town, Mm -hmm. you know, where we want to go, sometimes you might have to park a block away or two blocks away from the place where you want to go and mm-hmm. that's just a fact of life when you're towing a big RV rig. Now parking our big old truck is a bit of an issue at times too because it's just a big honking. <laughs> But our truck is not too tall for most parking decks right? because we don't have any sort of like lift kit on our truck. We don't have big super tires on our truck. So pretty much most parking garages Seymour will fit into as As long as our bikes are not not on on the rack. I'll tell you a story. We were entering (laughs) Yellowstone National Park from the the northeast entrance up by Cook City. The metropolis of Cook City. Yeah. Well, we just had lunch in a little place called and it had the distinction of being the only place open in cook city which made our choice pretty easy (laughs) (laughs) and when when we we walked in you know we picked up a menu and went to the counter we're browsing the menu and the proprietor said uh, put that away you have three things to choose from. Barbecue, jambalaya, or chili. <laughs> <laughs> so we went for the barbecue sandwich. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It had kind of a manwich flavor. Yeah. The sauce did. Which I like manwich. So <laughs> <laughs> I like a good manwich. It was a manwich basically. And we were driving into the entrance and the ranger stepped out of his little ranger shack and was waving his arms and saying no no you know you need to take the wide entrance around around the side and i thought what's the problem and i saw that because we weren't towing our airstream at the time we didn't have our airstream we were just riding around in the truck and then i realized it was our bikes yeah and if that ranger hadn't stepped out i very well could have just plowed right through that low overhang with our e-bikes on the back of our truck yeah. because at that point in time we'd only been carrying the e-bikes for, for a, couple a couple of weeks and so I we wasn't really accustomed to it. To it. So just a little heads up for any of you out there who might be carrying bikes on the back of your truck mm-hmm. you need to think about the height of those bikes. If you're in a class B you will set up at a camp and then you're kind of there. Yeah honestly. unless you're towing a car behind you. you. That's where an e-bike might come in, frankly. Like if you carry an e-bike that has a good, you know, 30, 40, 50 mile range, you could hop on that e-bike and and go to town or do the things you want to do. Yeah. As long as you have decent weather and, you know, you're comfortable riding your bike in that sort of environment, you know. So that's it. Those are our thoughts. Thank you, ZZ, for the campfire question. If you have a question you would like to ask, Sean and Christy on Long Long Honeymoon, feel free to post a comment. We're always scanning your comments to find the next campfire question. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to our channel. It means the world to us to have you join Loloho Nation. And until next time, what do we say? We say Loloho. Loloho.
Yeah, Cook Outpost might be a better <laughs> name for this town because the town consists primarily of one street. Yeah, and a very short street. And most of the business establishments on that street are closed. <laughs> Do I dare say the restroom was interesting? There was some interesting engineering in the restroom. Let's not even go there. <laughs> but this is what makes travel interesting sometimes. Uh -huh. It's going to these small, out of the way towns and having these unique experiences. Mm -hmm. We didn't expect the Four Seasons when we came to Cook City. No. But we got a unique experience <laughs> that we will always remember. <laughs> that we did. <laughs> So thank you, Cook City.